2020 I read over 120 books and the number one question I get um, in my Instagram DMs, in kind of comments, in conversations with people is how do you read so much? I can't believe you read so many books. I can never read that many books. I read this many books and I could never increase the number of books I read. I did not start off by reading 120 books a year and while that is definitely not normal and that's kind of the extreme of reading, there are definitely ways that you can increase the number of books that you read every single year. And today I'm going to walk you through 10 tried and tested ways that you too can increase the number of books you read a year. Before we get started, please do click subscribe. You can also head on over to Bell books on Instagram and follow me on there. You can get my daily life updates, reading updates, etc. And finally, you can also join my Patreon book club if you would like. Well, we are this month reading one of the shortlisted books for the Women's Prize for Fiction, Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. I also have a worksheet related to this video which is available for you to download if you sign up for the reader or the reviewer tier on my Patreon. So the first way to read more books is to identify your motivation for wanting to read more books. Why do you want to increase the number of books you read a year. Is it really that you want to read more books or is it that you want to spend more time reading? What do you want to accomplish by reading more? Finding the reason that you want to read more books will help keep you motivated as you implement all of these tips and tricks that I'm going to be sharing with you. This might be something as simple as I want to watch less TV and the time that I free up I want to spend it reading or it could be I've always wanted to read all of the Star Wars books and I feel like at this rate I'm never going to manage to accomplish that unless I speed up my reading. Or it could be as simple as I really love reading and I want to make it a priority because I love learning about other cultures, being transported to different worlds and it improves my mental health. My second tip for you is publicly commit to reading more. So this could be online, this could be within your group of friends, this could be using a Goodreads book challenge. So set a reasonable goal for how how many books you want to read in say a month or in say a year and then in order to stick to that share that goal with your friends your family your social media following to kind of keep you accountable so that you feel motivated to continue to commit to the original goal my third tip is join a book club now I'm biased but I think book clubs are absolutely incredible ways of being motivated to read more books and having the pressure taken off what book you have to read next if you're in a book club you always kind of have that next book on your horizon and you can get fantastic recommendations all the time. You also have motivation to not give up on the books that you read because you're reading them with a group and you're looking forward to being able to talk about them even if you're going to be talking about them to say how much you didn't like the book. There's still that motivation to keep going and finish the book. As I mentioned at the start of the video I have just begun my own book club, Belle's Book Club. The link is in my bio if you want to join. This is going to be a fantastic way to keep yourself accountable for reading more books, to have the pressure taken off what book to read next and to keep your motivation to finish new books. My fourth tip is schedule your reading and I know this sounds really boring and it really doesn't sound that fun at all but scheduling something into your schedule means that you are making it a priority. If you schedule in an hour of reading at a certain time all that means is that you are prioritizing that activity because it is important to you and so you are creating time for it. No one is so busy that they can't make time for the things that they really enjoy. Scheduling your reading doesn't have to be hard it just has to be done to make sure that your brain knows that this is a priority for you and by not reading you're actively rejecting your priority rather than passively letting the priority slip by. You can also anchor your reading to an activity you already do so for example before I go to bed I'm going to read for half an hour so that means I have to get in bed half an hour earlier than I usually do which means I have to watch tv for half an hour less but that kind of pressure of deciding when to read is taken off because you're already getting in bed every single day and reading before you go to bed um, isn't that hard to integrate into your schedule. So number five is listen with your ears. Yes, that sounds really weird, but I'm just talking about audiobooks. I don't think I believed in the power of audiobooks until maybe late November last year when I finally started listening to them and it has literally revolutionized my reading life. I have been able to tackle big tomes that I have been putting off and not wanting to read because I have listened to them gradually on audiobook during times when I wouldn't have been able to read a paper book. So for example, I find it really hard to read in the evenings when I'm falling asleep 
sleep because I kind of hate holding the book up. So I listen to an audiobook and not only is it easier for me, but it also kind of sends me to sleep and I can put it on a timer so it turns off. Listening to audiobooks is a great way to multitask. You can listen to them while you're in a car, going for a run, going for your daily walk, brushing your teeth, doing a skincare, in the shower, and it doesn't require any extra time to listen to an audiobook. Number six, cut down on activities which don't bring value to your life. So for example, if you're a big TV watcher and you spend four hours an evening um, or day or whatever watching TV, I'm not saying cut out watching TV. If you like your TV, you like TV. But decide I'm gonna replace half an hour of that time with reading and be active about that. Hold yourself accountable. If you usually watch TV with your partner, decide that one night a week, you're not gonna watch TV, but you're gonna read together. You could read the same book, you could read a different book. It doesn't really matter. For example, you could decide that between dinner and 9 p.m. or when you put your kids to bed at 9 p.m., um, that you're not going to put the TV on, you're going to be reading during that time. And then after that, you can watch TV for the couple of hours before you go to bed, or whatever you prefer to do. But I'm very honest about this. I think that sometimes we kind of get into habits of spending time on things which don't really bring value to our lives. And just because that's a habit doesn't mean that we have to continue that habit for the rest of time. My seventh tip is read a book with someone you live with. This is very specifically with someone you live with. So this could be a housemate, your partner, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, whatever. But I think it's important that you live with them. So you're both reading the book at the same time. And the idea is basically that you have a motivation to be reading that book together. Because as you go along, you can kind of talk about it. You're motivated to keep reading the book because you have that kind of accountability and it's very close personal accountability. And it's also helping you swap out spending time on the non-productive things like Netflix, which you might usually be doing with that person that you live with, um, for a more productive activity. On the days when you feel motivated to read, you can motivate your friend. And on the days when they feel motivated to read and you don't, they can motivate you. It's kind of a win-win situation. My eighth tip for you, that's too many fingers. My eighth tip for you is stop reading books you don't like. I'm talking about if you pick up a book and you get 30 pages into it and you are hating it. Don't force yourself to trudge through the book. Just put it down, move on from your life, and pick up your next read. Obviously, if you're just kind of giving up on books after five pages every single time, that's kind of a warning signal that it's not that you don't like the books, it's more that you just can't get into them, which is probably more of a mindset. But genuinely, if you've started a book and you don't like it because it's triggering, it's boring, um, you hate the writing style, um, you hate the characters, something like that, and you are unmotivated by the existence of that book in your life, then just put it down, cut it out, and move on to the next one, and don't feel any shame or sadness about doing that. This is incredibly freeing and incredibly motivating when you're trying to read more books. Number nine is keep a TBR. In the book world, this basically means a to-be-read list, a running list of all the books you want to read next. This will help you so that when you finish a book, you already know what books you might want to read next, and you can kind of choose one from that list, knowing that it's related to your interests or your preferences without having to do the whole procedure of trying to look something up on Instagram or Google or YouTube and just feeling a bit lost. So number 10, get a library card. If finance is the reason that you're not reading very much, then seriously get a library card from whatever your local public library is. It is a game changer. I do understand that during COVID, a lot of libraries might have been shut and that might have been difficult, um, but the world is mostly opening back up at this point. And libraries with it. libraries are a fantastic free way for people to be able to read and check out books in their local communities. So those were my 10 tips for helping you read more. As I said at the beginning of this video, I have a worksheet available for you to download as long as you're signed up to my Patreon as a reader, reviewer, or librarian. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Comment down below which one of these tips or strategies you are going to be implementing in the future to help you read more books.